know it's good to have some friends? How many people know you can't have What's a lot of friends? How many people know you need to have some friends and then you need what? to have some associates? <laughs> <laughs> How many people know that friends you might be able, if you're good, you can count them on one hand? And then how many people know that you can just say what's up to somebody, but they're not your friend? Five years old. I've known this person for five years. I mean, since I was five, since she was five years old. We were in kindergarten together. And listen, if you've been friends for over 20 years, this is the rule. You're going to stay friends, okay? You don't fall out when you're 46. You know, you don't fall out when you've known somebody for 30 years. That's just not what happens. And so she is a teacher in the Shaker Heights school system. And once again, I've known her since we were both five years old. And she came to support me tonight. I'm so happy she's here. Y'all give it up for Aisha Fraser Mason. Yes. I want to really get some information to my young people who are in the audience tonight. And listen, consider yourselves blessed. I don't believe in luck. How many people know that there's good luck, but then there's the good Lord? I don't believe in good luck. So it's not by chance that you guys are here tonight. It's on purpose. And I'm so excited that you're here because you could be doing anything else right now. And so I want to give this opportunity, it's maximum time, to give some very good information, which I think you guys can really use to help change your paradigm that you're thinking, to challenge the way that you think right now to think on a higher plane, to think on a more elevated plane. And so <clears throat> I'd like to just start out by saying <laughs> in 2011, last year, well almost last year, a little over a year ago, a native of New Orleans, Louisiana, released a song that was really kind of different than the songs that he's been used to releasing. He's normally, you know, releasing things that we can kind of dance to and have a good time with. But this song took a different kind of turn. This native of New Orleans, Louisiana, named Dwayne Carter, also known as, Dwayne. released a song that really had some prolific lyrics. It really had a vibe kind of different. If anybody in here is a 90s hip hop fan, LL Cool J had a song out in the 90s that said, I need love, and it was kind of like a, you could slow dance to it, but then you could maybe just kind of vibe to it. It was different than his typical type of, types of songs that he released. I think Lil Wayne kind of took a same direction of that song, because in 2011, this song that made the charts, let me get this statistic right, eight different countries, over 60 different charts, that song spent 88 weeks on charts all over the globe, peaking at number five on the US singles chart. Never made it to number one, but I still think a lot of people heard it. Over 70 million hits on YouTube. And what the lyrics of that song said had a lot of crooks that try to steal your heart, never really had luck, you could never figure out how to what? How to love. You could never really figure out how to love. Now, anybody who saw that video noticed that that woman who starred in the video made a series of bad decisions. And it was dysfunction after dysfunction. She put the fun in dysfunction, OK? She made a series of bad decisions in her life that led up to her receiving what could potentially be the worst news she's ever had in her life. And so the video starts with her running down the hallway because she doesn't accept that news that that doctor just told her. And as the video continues, it rewinds. And then it shows almost a second video of what her life would have been like if she would have made a series of better decisions. I'm not going to say good. I'm not going to be judgmental. I'm just going to say better. Made a series of better decisions. Now, though those lyrics were pro profound, though those lyrics really touched you and made you think, I wish the dude didn't look like this who put the lyrics on. <laughs> yeah, look at it good. <laughs> I wish the dude who put those lyrics out didn't look like that. 
See, I need that light off so y'all can really see. I need almost like some of the lights on, but some of the lights off. Can you guys still, that, ooh, that, uh-huh, uh-huh. That was good, good, good. Can you guys see now? Good. Because that, little do a lot of people know who are attracted to that. And yes, ladies, I've talked to women who like that. No, 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 I do. But little do you know, they are subliminal messages that perpetuate the prison culture on the outside of prison walls. So when you look at images of ex-cons and felons, that's the way of life, that's the culture, that's the prison culture, tats everywhere. And let me tell you something, that's not cute when you're like 72, <laughs> right? That's not cute, I mean, you get your mama's name on your arm, cute. You get a little peace sign, cute. Your first and last name is the name of your company. Your face is your logo. And I know that that works, and I know that it's real, because when I said I was a teacher years ago, there was a time and a couple of people in this room can relate to what I'm saying, you may get the roster of the students that you'll have for that coming up year. Any elementary ed majors in the house, this will happen. And you'll look at that roster and you'll go, oh, okay, I got, all oh, right. She's a nice girl, oh, okay. All right, good. Mm. <laughs> I have the spawn of Satan in my room next year, great. And people know that by the kid's name they recognize, and the brand and the reputation that floats around and proceeds and follows him. You guys have a brand. And what you say, what you do, how people describe you when you're not around is your brand. I think of what Dr. Miles Monroe said. He said, the test of true leadership, AAA, AAA, the test of true leadership Cleveland Heights High School students. The test of true leadership is if you're able to uphold the leadership principles in the absence of the leader. So if you really want to know if your leadership is effective, if you want to know whoever's leadership you're following is effective, what do you do when they're not around? Do you hear what their direction is and their influence that they've had in your life? ringing in your ear that will help guide you and make you navigate to the right decisions in your life? Because true leadership that's effective that you'll recall in those moments worked. When you're with your friends, do your friends make you better? Or do they compromise who you are? You know what I think friends are like, guys? I think friends are like math problems. Some of them add to you and some of them take away. And somebody really knows what I'm talking about. And that's all right, because if you are the one that takes away, you don't have to raise your hand, just blink. If it's you, if it's you, just blink. Yeah, uh huh. You, run, you running with add problems, addition problems, or you running with subtraction problems? If what your friends do compromise what you know is right, that's the curb right there. That's the curb. <laughs> I think about that PSA that was out a couple years ago. Remember there were like a series of PSAs when it talked about how parents should be pretty strict and a little bit more aware of what their kids are watching on TV so you can put parental firewalls up on your cable or on your computer. And I remember those series of commercials that came out so funny and it took me a couple times to see it to really get it. There was a little mother who had like lemonade and she was out on the back porch of her house and there were like 10 gangsters in her house. And they were like, y'all, the Italian dudes, you know, Rico, and you know, all those kind of Italian guys from the mafia. I guess, you know, trying to maybe say that it was similar to a show that was on TV. And she said, hi, come on in. I've got some lemonade. Listen, my husband and I really enjoy your show. But last night, it got a little violent. <laughs> 